In early America, black slaves and white indentured servants are equally exploited. Their work is what was valuable, not their person. Then laws begin to distinguish between black and white. 1640 is sort of the turning point where Africans are going to be treated differently. And slavery spreads across all the colonies. People are being considered property. The downward spiral begins. An entire economy based on exploitation of Africans is in place within a generation. Before 1800, more people came to America from Africa than from anywhere else. And most of them came in chains. Their toil helped make the United States the richest nation on earth. Slavery was no sideshow in American history. It was the main event. America was a slave-owning country longer than it has been a free one. And the legacy of slavery haunts us still. We've made certain progress in race relations, but we'll never get further until we look more closely at slavery. The Dutch West India Company had established a fur trading post in 1624 on a hilly island called Manahattes. The area would become New York City. Less than 200 people lived in the settlement. Most were men from Northern Europe who worked for the company. To make larger profits, the Dutch West India Company wanted free labor. Free Africans had come to the New World with European explorers in the 1530s. English settlers in Jamestown, Virginia purchased 20 Africans from Dutch traders in 1619. Five years later, the first enslaved Africans arrived in Dutch New Amsterdam. Atlantic Creoles had cultural roots in both Africa and Europe. Some were the offspring of European men and African women. Some traveled the seas with Europeans. Some may have been literate. Many spoke multiple languages. The enslaved did not know if or when freedom would come. In the settlements of Virginia, Massachusetts, and New Amsterdam, slavery was undefined. There were no laws. No rules, no regulations. Because slavery had no legal structure, the Atlantic Creoles were able to negotiate for greater autonomy. In 1635, several of them petitioned the Dutch West India Company for wages they believed the company owed them. Anthony Portuguese sued a white merchant in 1638. A year later, Pedro Negreto and Manuel de Roos successfully sued Europeans for wages due. Court records indicate that Atlantic Creoles made the system work for them when they could. In some African slavery, there is a greater sense of the rights of the enslaved people. There's a greater sense of obligation on the part of the community. And I think that these enslaved people bring that idea of slavery with them. The Dutch West India Company has a very problematic relationship with the area Native Americans. By 1639, relations had deteriorated into war. At that point, a number of the Creoles are put into the military force against the Indians. There is a fear among Europeans during this time that African Americans may join with Native Americans. And the first 11, in fact, used this fear to negotiate. The company responded with what has become known as half freedom. These men and their wives could live on what became known as the free Negro lots. They could farm their own land, and they paid a kind of tribute in return to the company. The company also had the right to call them up if they needed their labor. The small group of elite Virginia planters have committed to the use of race slavery to expand their tobacco holdings. In 1691, they forbid free blacks from living in certain counties. If you're African American, you cannot have an education. You cannot move about freely. You cannot hold property. All of these 
constraints are falling in on one generation. It's a link in a chain of slavery whereby people cannot become free. Before this, there were ways of becoming free. Slavery is replacing indentured servitude as the labor system of choice. And by the beginning of the 18th century, it is clear that through law, in the Chesapeake, slavery is being made a racially based institution and people are being considered property.